Clear prop. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Central here. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day as always. On August 24th, 2021, a Piper PA-32 made an emergency landing on Interstate 5 in California. This was obviously a newsworthy event for the local news stations in the area. However, as per usual, the news got some facts wrong. No big surprise there. However, one of the news stations in particular, ABC Channel 10, interviewed someone they called an aviation expert. The link to watch that short interview in full will be in the description box below this video, so you can check that out after you're done here. Now, the news anchor identified this expert as Jim Kedrick, saying that he's a pilot as well as the president and CEO of the Air and Space Museum in San Diego. Now, I don't personally know Jim Kedrick and likely never will. He might be a nice guy and might even qualify as an expert. However, he really dropped the ball in this interview. How is that, you ask? Well, we're going to watch a short segment of that interview here in a minute, but first we need to get a little bit of background information regarding the coverage of the mishap leading up to the interview. In this interview, as well as previous videos from this news agency regarding the emergency landing, the fact that jet fuel was spilled was repeated several times. Now, me being a general aviation pilot myself, and being quite familiar with aircraft like the PA-32, this immediately threw up some red flags. Small general aviation aircraft, especially legacy aircraft like the PA-32, are powered by reciprocating gasoline engines. This is common knowledge for uh, experts like myself, however, even a little bit of due diligence and a couple of quick Google searches will yield information regarding the incident aircraft specifications. And I'm not just talking about PA-32s, I'm talking about this specific aircraft. Had the news agency done even a little bit of research, they would have known that jet fuel was likely not involved. Now, I say likely not involved because it's not impossible, it's just highly, highly unlikely. If you put the tail number of this aircraft into Google, the very first link to pop up will take you to flightaware.com. Here you can see that the aircraft is indeed a 1972 Piper PA-32-300, and you can see that it's running on a Lycoming TIO-540 engine. It even says that this is a reciprocating engine producing 310 horsepower. And if you don't know what a Lycoming TIO-540 is, well, you can look that up on Google as well to see what the specs are. And even Wikipedia has it sort of right when it comes to the type of fuel these engines burn. Wikipedia says it burns, and I quote, 100 octane rating gasoline. And more specifically, that would be 100 low lead, often referred to as avgas. Of course, there are STCs out there for these engines to burn other kinds of gasoline, such as the new to market G100, which is an unleaded alternative 100 octane aviation fuel. Regardless, it's not jet fuel. Now, I did a fair bit of research on this mishap to see if I could find anywhere where it said the airplane was misfueled. So far, I haven't found anything to indicate that jet fuel was involved. In fact, I found one article where somebody had redacted a statement regarding jet fuel having been spilled during the mishap. They did this by striking through the word jet and just leaving the word fuel, which leads me to believe that jet fuel was indeed not involved. Now let me be clear, if jet fuel had been introduced into this aircraft by accident, that could very well explain the in-flight loss of the engine. However, to jump to that conclusion would be highly irresponsible. With that in mind, let's go ahead and watch the segment of the interview I was talking about earlier that I have issue with. Certainly, we heard some of those people talking about the jet fuel that you know, either got on them or got on their things. Talk to us a little bit about what, what might have happened. That was just because of the impact and the fuel tank was, you know, punctured or something? Right, right. There could have been some sort of a rupturing of a fuel tank. Uh, very fortunately, of course, there was no fire. Uh, jet fuel actually has a kindling temperature much different than, uh, than avgas, uh, so it, it has a tendency to not be as flammable, uh, especially uh, uh, the Navy uh, JP5, uh, JP4 that we use 
uh, was uh, was not very flammable at all, believe it or not, uh, in a burning situation, which was uh, which was a plus. But uh, once again, it looks like they did a good job. It's something uh, that every pilot prepares for, and oftentimes you actually pick your routes when you're flying VFR, visual flight rules. Sometimes you'll pick your route uh, with um, uh, locations that might be optimum if you ever did have a, uh, a situation like this occur. All right. Now, Jim here didn't necessarily say anything that was incorrect. However, by omitting the information regarding what type of fuel this aircraft is supposed to use, he has essentially allowed misinformation to be spread to the general public. There are going to be people out there that watch this interview that don't do their own due diligence and end up thinking that small planes like this run on jet fuel, which they absolutely do not. So how should Jim have worded his statement? Well, let's listen to the news anchor's question again, and this time I'll take the position of the expert, and I'll answer as Jim should have. Certainly. We heard some of those people talking about the jet fuel that, you know, either got on them or got on their things. Talk to us a little bit about what, what might have happened that was just because of the impact and the fuel tank was, you know, punctured or something? I would certainly question whether jet fuel was actually involved here. Planes like the PA-32 run on a 100-octane gasoline, often referred to as avgas. It's highly unlikely that the plane was filled with jet fuel. Not impossible, but unlikely, because the fueling apparatus for jet fuel is designed such that it doesn't readily fit into the tanks meant to contain avgas. It would be prudent to wait for the findings of the National Transportation Safety Board as they will determine whether the airplane was fueled improperly or not. Regardless, what we can say about this incident is that the pilot did an excellent job of setting the airplane down safely given the circumstances and was able to successfully minimize the risk involved with such an emergency. Now before I wrap this up, there's one more piece of evidence that suggests this airplane was indeed not misfueled. Flight data showed that the airplane was only in the air for approximately 9 minutes. ATC audio was available for the flight as well, and when the mishap plane was asked by ATC how many souls and how much fuel was on board, the pilot reported back, two souls and about three quarters of a tank. Now nine minutes of flight time was not enough time to burn off that much fuel and the PA-32 can carry a lot of weight, so had it been fueled and had it only been carrying two people, it could easily have been topped off. The fact that it had only three quarters of a tank on board suggests that it wasn't refueled. It also suggests that it wasn't a fuel contamination caused by the addition of Jet A. And the reason I say that is, it wouldn't have been airborne nine minutes with Jet A on, in the tanks. It would have uh, died a whole lot sooner. In fact, most airplanes that get misfueled and, and get Jet A put into their avgas don't really make it past the uh, departure into the runway before the engine fails. Um, so unfortunately, uh, that's quite a serious situation to have your engine fail right after takeoff, but that's typically where it's going to happen, not nine minutes later. Bottom line is, not only should you take what the news feeds you with a grain of salt, you also need to be wary when so-called experts are brought on as they may not present you with the facts you really need to hear, especially when they are under media time constraints and pressure. Do your due diligence and educate yourself as things happen, because to trust the rapid-paced 24-hour news cycle to get things right is the falsest of false hopes.